Good morning and welcome to our monthly webcast. I am Samir Mehta. This is session number 42 and number 6 since our partnership with the American College of Cardiology. We have a very interesting and an extremely unusual case of a PCI performed in a patient with dextrocardia. I'll get you to the cath lab, but also to inform you that a little later in the broadcast, we'll be joined by a special guest, Dr. Valentin Fuster, who's the director of Mount Sinai Heart, and more relevant to our discussions today, he's the principal investigator of the Freedom Trial, which in my estimate is one of the landmark clinical achievements of uh, year 2012. We'll get to that later, but before that, let me take you to the cardiovascular laboratory where Dr. Kinney and Dr. Sharma are standing by. Samin, uh, good morning. Yeah. Good morning um, and welcome. And um, as you said, um, one of the, our focus will be uh, on the freedom. Uh, but uh, before we um, get to, let's go to this very interesting case. Unusual, I would say, uh, probably this kind of case comes maybe once in two years. Uh, this is the patient uh, who is 78 year old has a dextrocardia and citrus inverses uh, and um, uh, and basically uh, the presented back uh, in uh, September with non STEMI and uh, cath revealed two vessel CAD and normal LV function uh, at that time patient very calcific lesion of the right coronary had a rota and DES uh, did well but continues to have angina and also has a calcified LED D1 bifurcation lesion which we will show uh, on a good medical therapy uh, and uh, multiple risk factors and most important being dextrocardia with situs inverses which really challenges how we are going to do an angiogram on this particular case uh, and uh, Anu will show this angiogram. Yeah, if you can uh, play it here, this is the LV gram. Uh, question is uh, how do we do angio angiography and uh, what catheters and uh, how do we manipulate the catheters when there is uh, dextrocardia. So you can go to the LAO view um, and normally what you do is when you are going up you will see that um, you have to get into the LV but uh, what you do is you just do the opposite. So the, instead of doing an RAO gram if you see here it is an uh, LAO, LAO LV gram. So the uh, catheter will uh, go, goes into the uh, LV easily. Then question comes well, how do you do the right? Same you pull back, normally you will go to the LAO view and clock to get into the right, go to the RAO view and counter you will get into the RCA. So uh, this is what she presented with was a non-Q wave MI, uh, looked like a, a thrombotic lesion but uh, was uh, in the presence of non-Q wave MI she had calcium, uh, we required rota and two stents of the RCA that is what you see here now, it is the same thing in another view. For you, when, For the, did, when did you first come to know the patient had dextrocardia? See, uh, when she presented to us, uh, then the, it was an outside hospital. They did do, uh, do an echocardiogram and they were not able to see it clearly. There was a question that likely that she could have had a dextrocardia. So the, when she presented to us, we were likely that it could be a dextrocardia because in the echocardiogram, they were not able to see everything clearly. And uh, le uh, left is easy, you do not need lot of manipulation, you can go to the LA view and uh, you know the catheter actually engages easily into the uh, uh, left coronary system. But uh, same thing instead of LAO you do RAO, instead of RAO you do LAO. This is the LAO caudal view where you see the LAD and um, uh, it is uh, just before the first diag there is a significant uh, disease and uh, you see a small size uh, RCA. A circumflex, yeah, small size circumflex, and this is what when we go caudal, you could uh, see uh, nice bifurcation. The LAD, which is on the top, going up to the apex, and the vessel that is just coming off is the diagonal, uh, which you see there. We have the another picture. The is very small, yeah. have moderate disease, very short left main, and the proximal LAD bifurcate into this uh, um, large vessels. Both are like three millimeter, and just before the bifurcation, there is a ninety percent stenosis which you can call by definition is 0, um, uh, I mean 100 zero zero, uh, that involving the proximal part of the Y and individual branches does not seem to have disease on an angiogram. Yeah. So now that is the plan hour uh, today to do an intervention of this, uh, we can go back to the slide of this bifurcation lesion of the proximal LED which seems to be 
uh, calcified and I think uh, uh, whether based on the experience of the right coronary artery, Anu did the right, uh, he's very um, kind of uh, biased because of how the right was with the calcification that even with the thrombotic and the non stemi setting there to do rotablation, uh, we're using two bars, actually not even one, we use a 1.25 and 1.75 bar uh, and uh, put a two uh, cobalt chromium ever eluting stents. Uh, patient uh, since has angina and now this is the bifurcation we are planning. Uh, syntax score 17 and of course appropriateness already there with the symptoms and maximum medical therapy. Now with that note, uh, what we are going to do now is uh, what Anu is doing at present, uh, wiring the LED and do a IVAS. So just try to see that should we do a rotational atherectomy or can we do just uh, uh, our cutting balloon, angio sculpt or, uh, uh, or flex tome and then put uh, stands one or two that will be part of our subsequent discussion and so. But I think this is the case. Uh, or before you yeah. before you do the IVAS, uh, based on the angiogram, it does appear uh, there is moderate to heavy calcification. What would be your thought? Yeah, I would say uh, otherwise, if we're not on the webcast, and so we'll do the rotational threctomy in this case. Uh, same uh, wiring is so e uh, difficult, and uh, if you see here, I'm unable to now get the wire further down. It's a very gritty feeling. There's a lot of yeah, calcium, calcium there. there. So, and uh, try to do a one uh, quick. I was pulled back. 561. Okay. Now the patient uh, is on uh, uh, clopidogrel. Patient received uh, uh, bivalurin, and we always check. Uh, people say you don't need to check on uh, ACT on bivalurin. Yes, principally that is correct. But uh, we give a bolus through the arterial uh, sheath. Uh, but sometimes IV can be infiltrated, so we do wait uh, because sometimes you may need to give some extra dose uh, that. Um, Actually, okay. we can yeah. have fluoro there that cannot even advance. Yeah, wow. I suspected that that's a very severe. So that is not 1.75. Get a 1.5. Yeah, yeah. I, I think uh, I won't be able to yeah, buy but the I, Yeah, no, but we can. Uh, can we anything on the I was just if at this level? You want level? to try to go? To, okay, you can. No, no, I was thing is yeah, crystal is here. Nothing there. You want me to try to go to the dag? No, dag. No, that's fine. But just to say, um, nothing is seen there. But lot of calcific arc proximally. No, don't. Uh, That's the left main. Yeah, it's the left main. Um, now, question is, you want to do into the uh, diagram? I could yeah? try. That will be fine. Yeah. So we'll, now, once the IVAS does not go, initially we were thinking, should we use a 1.75 bar or so? We'll get, probably you will downgrade it to a 1.5. Excellent. Uh, as uh, I pointed out, that even right required double um, uh, bar. We usually 90. 697 percent of the time we use single bar and this in particular case definitely required two bars um, uh, whether it will require two bars here well, we already opened 1.75 in anticipation uh, but um, once your IVAS does not go that means yeah. very tight lesion 1.75 could be very traumatic right and create more dissection or slow so flow even so. the diag is a trouble I yeah. think you need so to do the lesion the tight is the lesion good so we take it out uh, and what we are going to do now is uh, put a rota wire uh, going into the LED, maybe then later on might end up in doing the rota of on both. the diagonal side also. But most important is that the proximal region which is calcified uh, will require rotation atherectomy. And you make a cine again. So it's a very impressive uh, that many people will down, uh, see that? Once you see that calcium um, on Tramtac. during both uh, systole and diastole, uh, that with significant calcium in that area, uh, that uh, usually even IVAS is not needed, you decide clinically. Now, while we are getting ready for uh, rotation atherectomy, let me go over the uh, you know two points of today. One is the right approach in a complex multi-vessel CAD, uh, PCI versus cabbage, some historical data, and then get to the freedom trial. And the second remain the side branch intervention. We learned that uh, putting a stent in the main vessel in a bifurcation lesion uh, is good. But what to do for the side branch, lot of issues, lot of studies, and there is a latest uh, study of a smart strategy, really answering that pinpoint question that should you uh, or should you not go after the side branch uh, uh, during your stenting of the main vessel. So we'll go through it, uh, and the first one being the freedom trial, and I'll t show three historic slides first. From the berry, remember the berry trial with the PTCA versus cabbage? Uh, in a diabetic and non-diabetic, we have 10-year data now that uh, there was difference 
the mortality curve separated in favor of cabbage after three years, which led to become significant at five years, led to the NIH alert that cabbage should be done in patients with multi-vessel uh, PCI. And of course, we said, well, that was a PPCA uh, and uh, was not the drug looting stent. And so, uh, and of course, the initial stent and then the not a drug looting stent. The second trial was the Berry 2D, which is the more uh, low risk, uh, I would say, uh, patients because of uh, one or two vessel disease, uh, not severe ischemia. The whole concept of should you do a medical therapy or uh, initial medical stabilization and may need revascularization later, or you do an immediate revascularization, and of course, based on the anatomy, decided cabbage versus PCI. The overall, again, showing from the mortality point of view at five, six years, that uh, no difference in the PCI group, but those extensive disease which we decided to send for cabbage, curves started separating and P cabbage was superior to a medical uh, therapy uh, in terms of lower mortality at five year uh, in patients with extensive CAD. Then there was a trial done cardia, uh, which uh, initially one year data and then five year cabbage uh, in about 500 plus patients, cabbage versus PCI. 69% were DES and overall showed now the five year data presented uh, in the uh, European Society of Cardiology uh, showing that in this trial, well selected uh, patients, their primary endpoint did favor cabbage uh, with the trend towards, uh, but overall individual endpoints of uh, your MI, stroke, uh, and were not different with the PCI and cabbage. And again, this is selected patient, higher revascularization in the PCI group as we expected. Then led to, that led to the main design uh, and the concept that if we understood maybe the DES will change, that maybe the DES will prevent patient having death, MI, or stroke, not the revascularization. <coughs> and that was the basis of the freedom trial that we knew that revascularization will be higher in the PCI group. The whole question was that will the hard point, death, MI, and stroke, will be lower uh, or will be identical actually in the cabbage uh, and the DES group uh, the, uh, after the maximum uh, evidence-based medical therapy re achieving the targets and uh, maximizing uh, medical therapy of these uh, patients with complex coronary artery disease. And this uh, basically uh, the trial screening and the enrollment which has been uh, presented in uh, NEJM uh, at the simultaneous presentation with Dr. Fuster in uh, AHA and published online uh, at the same time. And overall, 1,900 patients, which may came from 3309 eligible patients, 57% of the patients were randomized. Again, these were the patients after the angiogram. Surgeon and interventionist both agreed that this patient is equipoised, whether could go for PCI, could go for cabbage. Simple uh, question comes to type A lesions, even 304 in three vessel, were not randomized because we felt that those patients should, could get uh, PCI and will do very well. Same thing, extensive coronary disease, which uh, few occlusions, total occlusions, we felt the PCI is not super, is not uh, maybe high risk, so we went for cabbage. But these are the patients where both interventionist and cabbage, uh, the surgeon uh, ethically felt that yes, there is no, based on the available data, based on the clinical practice, there is no difference in the two strategy, and those the patient randomized, and that makes a high number of cases. I think one of the trial where more than 50% of the patients who were eligible were randomized really gives credence uh, and credibility to the trial. And uh, 953 went for uh, PCI, all were the DES, and uh, approved DES were Texas and Cypher. Uh, and of course, uh, the cabbage group uh, uh, were uh, left to the center, whether it was arterial bypass and uh, off pump, on pump, and so of course, arterial bypass was used in 95% plus cases. Uh, these are the various risk factors which uh, uh, kind of common uh, from the baseline point of view. But more important is, wanted to emphasize that this is the trial of complex CAD. Number of lesions were 5.7. More than four stents were used in the PCI group. Syntax score was 26.2. So mean syntax score. Therefore, it clearly you are taking to the moderately high complex, and we know if you are extremely complex, those patients went for cabbage. So that we are talking about the real complex lesion compared to what were there in the Courage trial or any other trial or Barry 2D, where there were more simpler cases. Now, what did we find? Primary outcome and uh, the death, and you can see clearly the curves start separating at three years, similar to what happened in the Barry, in the Barry trial, even with the PTCA. 
uh, and more importantly the mortality point of view that separation of the curve till three years somehow they are identical it just tells you that patients in the PCI group uh, continues to have event whether it's a protection of the bypass into the bypass patients or the patients coming back for the recurrent myocardial infarction in the PCI group leading to uh, mortality and these are the individual endpoints that primary endpoint of the death MI and stroke, death CCI? or MI, all were significantly lower in the cabbage group compared to the PCI group. And of course, uh, the only uh, thing in favor of the PCI, which again, based on the earlier trial, including syntax and the old cardiac trial, that lower stroke rate in the PCI group compared to cabbage group, it's a uh, half. Uh, and what about the revascularization, which is MECI? Uh, clearly, we again favored uh, cabbage with a lower um, the revascularization and one year endpoints just to show again that mortality and so did not make difference at one year. It's only after three plus years it makes difference. Now, very interesting. Now, what we have been teaching everyone that syntax has a very important bearing. But again, in this particular study, region also we had to say. Because the, as you can see here, whether syntax was less than uh, the 22, I mean low risk, intermediate 23 to 32, or more than uh, 32, there was no interaction of the syntax with the freedom. But I had to say one thing, one of the region, actually two regions, one because simple cases were not randomized in the, in the trial because simple cases got a PCI. Also very high risk syntax score cases were not randomized because those patients went for cabbage. So the clearly, but even if you see here, uh, particularly once you get to a syntax of 23 and above, there is a clear separation of the two curves uh, and of course, uh, significant with the 33. Now, another interaction which is shown here is uh, the North American cohort. In the North American cohort, you can see that somehow the outcome favored a cabbage more compared to uh, the rest of the world. Now, is it because the the better cabbage technique or, or PCI technique, uh, it all remains. But the key is that interaction was there from North America and so. Two and three vessel, this is one of the important question which will come up all the time, that uh, two vessel were small, about 18% um, of patients had two vessel. Three vessel clearly, you have the odd ratio uh, uh, to the right of the uh, unity, but uh, in the two vessel, it overlaps. So that question comes uh, that whether uh, the two vessel can be stratified based on some of the other data subgroup in the freedom trial and that led to uh, this conclusion uh, by Dr. Fuster and uh, the freedom trial investigators that patients with diabetes and advanced coronary artery disease, cabbage was superior to PCI in that it significantly reduced rate of death and myocardial infarction with a higher rate of stroke and uh, this goes back uh, also with the editorial uh, that it uh, suggests that patients with diabetes ought to be informed about the potential survival benefit from cabbage for the treatment of multi-vessel disease and discussion should take place with the patient prior to angiography or after angiography before revascularization decision is made. So that's a very, very important, the whole concept of the heart team. And I would say that uh, from the freedom uh, point of view, I will stop here. And uh, I, uh, if uh, Dr. Fuster is here. Yes, uh, I mean, uh, we are uh, delighted and honored to have uh, Dr. Uh, Valentin Fuster uh, join us, uh, the principal investigator of uh, this uh, amazing uh, and very clinically relevant trial. And, and my question uh, to Dr. Fuster is uh, very, uh, very focused in the sense that we learned even with the very trial. And then subsequently, they showed the NIH, uh, NHLBI registry later on that despite the message lower mortality in the cabbage, the practitioners did not adopt that message and uh, number of patients with the three vessel going for PCI continue to say pre-NIH uh, alert of the berry uh, versus later. And now clearly, now in the DS arena, uh, we actually, uh, uh, the Freedom Trial has shown decrease in mortality. How are we, one of course we'll ask Dr. Fuster to kind of make a nutshell uh, statement, but more importantly, how it gets to the nitty gritty of our day to day by changing the guidelines and so on. Well, thank you. <clears throat> thank you very much. I think the results are clear. So clear that if I have a patient with diabetes and angina before the patient undergoes cardiac catheterization or angiography, I would tell the patient that the chances to have two or three vessel disease are very, very uh, clear and that is diabetes really tends to involve two or three vessels 
And I would make very clear to the patient that the data supports the use of cabbage if this is the situation that turns out to be true at the time of angiography. I think we have to begin to, as the editorial pointed out, we have to begin to educate everybody prior to have a patient at angiography because this is most of the cases, again, uh, are these type of cases with two or three vessel disease. Actually, in the registry, in the CAT registry in this country, um, I would say that in about 36% uh, of patients who undergo cardiac catheterization, 36% have actually two or three vessel disease and diabetes. So this is a huge denominator. This patient is a very, very frequent one, and I think we have to do a lot of work prior to the angiogram. I think you're uh, exactly right, and I was uh, impressed with the caliber and the, the precision of the editorial which followed, uh, which is uh, echoing the same message. Uh, I was uh, a little uh, amazed uh, how many people, how, you know, you, you pre-screened 33,000 patients uh, for 10% uh, uh, appears extremely uh, uh, you know, a strict uh, kind of uh, criteria. Most of them were, uh, is there any reason? Most of them did not qualify from the PCI point of view or from cabbage or both? Well, you screen so many people, many are, many are pre-diabetics and even are not diabetics. I think the, the pre-screen, I think the critical issue is at the moment you have the diabetic patient and with two or three vessel disease, which I am saying to you is about 30, more than 36%. 30 percent then is, is of these people, uh, we were able to convince them to enter into the study over 50%. The other did not. But the critical issue that I, it was, uh, uh, is the message today is in most of the cases, once you finish the angiogram and you say, well, you may be randomized in the study, says forget it. I don't want my chest to be open. Exactly right. And there was no data, prospective data, to convince the patient. Now, you cannot use the same approach. Do you think uh, any of the newer generation drug eluting stents could uh, make further difference? Uh, I'm sorry to tell you no. Uh, and it's not a bias, it's a reality. These absolute figures of 8% difference that you have with cabbage versus PCI I don't see how you are going to get this difference with any kind of stents. In fact, when we look at it, the new stents and you look at the issue of thrombosis, you may move 1%, 1.5% in favor of the new stents compared with the previous one. So I don't know how you will be able to overcome at 8 9% difference between cabbage and PCI. Look, I, I thank you for uh, conducting this uh, wonderful uh, trial with uh, tremendous clinical implications. I'm sure it is going to manifest in the newer uh, guidelines also. Samin, uh, back to you. Continue and tell us uh, what's happening with the case. Okay. Uh, we're just getting ready there. And now uh, while uh, the rotor wire has been advanced, and I'll, meanwhile, I'll just get to the second part uh, while Anu is getting with the rota uh, have been advanced and we have a 1.5 bar. And the issue remains is, <coughs> uh, sorry, uh, that once you put a stent and now you need to go to the side branch, if you go with a balloon only, you deform it. And therefore, the issue has been one, should you go after the side branch? Second, if you go after, should you do a kiss so that your deformity is avoided? And of course, we are not talking about putting a second stent. The question is, you go to the st side branch, you put a stent, uh, the, uh, you do a PTCA, should you? Do a case or not, or should you go after the side branch? And that's where have been an issue. Now, I have uh, three uh, important message on this field. One was the Nordic bifurcation study three. That was case or not case when you stand the main vessel and clearly basically showed that uh, final kissing balloon dilatation with angiography, that mace, uh, this was not angiographic, uh, the trial, was clinical trial, that mace, death, MI, and TLR are exactly identical whether you kiss or not. I thought maybe if you don't kiss, maybe you have more angina. No, advanced class 2 angina was identical in the no kiss or kiss technique along with the stent thrombosis. So the message is that if your artery is open side, keep it open. You don't need to go after, uh, don't uh, kiss it uh, unless there is a, a decrease in blood flow or a patient having chest pain. Then second issue is the how should you kiss it? And this is the data basically show that what when we do a two kissing balloon, we usually under uh, under the size, uh, 
uh, the main vessel balloon for the distal vessel. So, what you do is you proximally actually you over expand and uh, distally you have under expansion and that cause lot of turbulence and of course, uh, those ormistonography you can see a turbulence and so with a kissing balloon dilatation. Now, if uh, you do a serial balloon dilatation clearly has a different mechanism you can open the side branch better although uh, this we started using some of them that you do have a higher problem uh, once you do many times you do a plaque shift. But serial high pressure balloon dilatation with a one two vessel size rather than kissing balloon dilatation has some concept because you can see the is the opposition of the stent mal opposition of the distal and proximal vessel you is much better once you do a serial balloon dilatation. So, very very important this new concept that rather than doing a kissing you do a sequential uh, side branch and main vessel uh, balloon dilatation. Then question was a smart strategy that is they have clear cut protocol that if you had a left main or non left main that should you go after the side branch or not go after the side branch based on if it was a residual of 70 percent lesion or 90 percent lesion and so on and so forth. And they said what they found is that once you are conservative means do not go after uh, unless it is a significant obstruction or aggressive that you try to make it as better possible that you do use more side branch ballooning and side branch stenting which is fine. But the question is by routinely going after and optimizing the side branch result from the smart strategy trial did it translate into a lower event rate and to answer is no actually it caused more myocardial infarction periprocedure MI, but no difference in target lesion uh, failure or target lesion revascularization or stent thrombosis. So, and uh, no uh, different at one year outcome. So, message basically is that as long as you have a less than 70 percent side branch stenosis post stenting of the main vessel you can leave it alone and the whole concept of the keep it open comes in. And of course, angiographically of course, you do little better, but uh, with the aggressive approach, but the no uh, in the no difference in the clinical endpoint. Samin, and before you go into the triton, a quick follow up yeah. there, uh, you know you mentioned 70 percent side branch uh, lesion, uh, is there any relevance or uh, role for uh, FFR there? Yeah, the, that actually the whole another field which we presented about 4 months ago that many of these lesions look 70 percent, but you do FFR. 82 percent will have FFR of more than 0 0.8. Right. So, therefore, it is supported by the data that FFR usually because they are very short lesion. Some of them is the looks like a overlap and uh, the we call uh, the overlap of the stent uh, you know the and that uh, on the non stented segment it looks a little hazy, but uh, FFR point of view they are not physiologically significant. So, that any of many of these cases you may decide based on the FFR. Now, then the Triton is the first bifurcation trial completed in United States which is the Triton side branch stent which is a bare metal which has a multi three joints and basically goes into the side branch about 5 uh, millimeter and then of course, the very open the, uh, the tube uh, into coil into the main vessel and then put a DES in the main vessel. So, the concept was should you do a PTCA uh, which we have been doing it in main vessel DES or put a Triton side branch stent and the, the DES in the main vessel. The trial of uh, 700 plus cases has been completed uh, as of last month and Sinai being the 46 cases enrolled 23 in each arm of the, the standard strategy and Triton uh, uh, is the lead enroller and credit goes to Anu who has done relentlessly to randomize patients in the trial. The other trial which we need to look for and will be presented in uh, uh, March in ACC is the DK crush 3. Remember DK crush was the only trial to show that compared to the conventional one stent approach the crush was superior uh, to, um, to a conventional which is a more complex, but you do a kissing balloon dilatation twice. Uh, and now the whole question is should you use a two stent DK crush versus Coulot and this will be presented in the ASCC as a late breaking trial and the concept basically is that uh, the various stenting strategy the uh, makes sense. Uh, beyond uh, DK crush or simple being cool out. Okay, Anno. So, if you see this, uh, I think angiogram. We just, if you can see here. So you have uh, one zero zero, but heavy calcium. Uh, see, because the lesion is so tight, uh, I was having trouble even with the going a regular wire across the lesion in the LED and the DAG. So, we had to do over the wire. So, we used a transit catheter 
to go with the regular uh, wire and then change to the rotor wire. Now, the transit catheter uh, though the IVAS did not uh, uh, go through the lesion, the transit catheter actually went through the lesion we were able to exchange to the rotor wire which uh, tells us uh, that uh, one fiber should be okay uh, in this uh, case. So, Anu you did downsize as uh, Samin was mentioning yeah. to a 1 5? Yeah, was uh, not 1 7, we have right. initially had 1 7 5 open, but now we have 1 5. If the transit catheter had not crossed the lesion, then we would have gone to 1 2 5. All right. Yeah. So, the same thing 3 steps you release the black knob here, go backward forward, you take out the tension between the Teflon sheath and the burr. At the Y connector again go backward forward this takes out the tension between the rotor bar and the wire and the last one would be on fluoro you just do a tap on the dyna if there is any tension left the bar will move but not jump Wonderful. on the dyna speed which is about uh, 70,000 rpm come off dyna and st start burring which will be slow pecking movement every time you go forward little by little go forward and come back and every time I am coming back they will be flushing. Yeah. Never push, just slow packing motion backward forward and uh, not more than uh, 20 seconds at a time watch for uh, the hemodynamics, blood pressure, EKG changes, it the patient is tolerating yeah. well. So now question is what we want to do? Uh, yeah, I think we can we do the side branch too. Should we go to one sun fiber then? Uh, no, I think that is okay. So, this is uh, the final, we can do a polishing, during polishing you can go a little faster. Come back in the guide. Yeah, now, can question is can we just put a rotor wire into the diagonal, we will see, come back in the guide. Anu, excellent uh, demonstration right. of both uh, a pecking motion as well as a polishing okay. run. Uh, Samin, yeah. uh, as you decide on uh, what to do next, uh, several questions have come here, uh, uh, mainly talking about the manipulation uh, required uh, for catheters in uh, dextrocardia case. Uh, uh, the question asked is what exactly is the motion which you are performing with the guiding catheter? For the right side, we said how we were going to engage the right, you go to the RCA and counter to get into the RCA. For the left, you can go to the LAO and uh, your regular clock movement will get into the uh, left uh, coronary artery. Left coronary artery engagement is not easy, it is usually the right. Instead of going to the LAO, go to the RAO, instead of doing clock, you counter and all your views will be opposite. Instead of doing an RAO LV gram, uh, uh, LV gram you will be doing an LAO LV gram to get uh, the same RAO uh, picture which we had shown. See as the classical teaching goes, it should be the reverse angles, however, yeah. the tilt stays the same. You want to go in Dyna? I think with Dyna you can yeah. move. No Dyna yet. We are trying to see if we can wire the dye wire. Yes. Otherwise, uh, we just get, get ready with, with the fine cross and uh, exchange so. once again. Yeah. Uh, exchange once again. Samin, uh, would you ever consider a transradial procedure for these cases? Um, yeah, I think engagement will be a little more Very difficult. challenging, but uh, we, if uh, that is if not the issue, then yeah. There have been some reported cases uh, going from the left radial approach as the preferable uh, between the two, but exactly I think as you mentioned would be extremely difficult. So, this is trying with yeah. the… Mm. No, pull back a little bit. Yeah. Now, I go back to the time when uh, all these cases uh, we were doing either with the balloon pump or the Take impeller. Yeah. No, what yeah. are you saying? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think this uh, the clearly the point is the burr in the position, it uh, prevents your wire motion. So, whether wire could go by itself is a different story. Uh, we will take this out and maybe this time we can use a 1.75 burr in need to. In, in the dag. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's the, the lesion is just the proximal. So, so do you want to go direct or no? No. Yeah, go with this, easier. This uh, tip is gone too. Yeah. I think the easiest is, is you already have a fine cross ready. 
so go back again so what is uh, based on what you mentioned today about uh, the smart synergy trial and uh, some of the other things uh, are you doing a final kiss or uh, leaving it alone oh i can tell you that uh, more and more i am actually always was not a, a big proponent of the final kiss the key is that i am the this trial did not include that you should le treat the lesion free that's the only problem now what i do usually is treat the lesion free and the post try not to go unless it is a 90% lesion because i think that by going side branch no matter what you have the you have a little better um, uh, that you are able to see a little better uh, stent uh, optimization and so but you do deform uh, the stent struts your drug concentration changes and we have seen so many times patient <coughs> come back with that focal osteal side branch restenosis so that's a, that always remains the issue so that i clearly uh, is not um, uh, the post uh, kissing dilatation but quite a bit pre and many of these cases do a uh, uh, the flex storm uh, so that beforehand uh, that you have dilated uh, cutting balloon so that can chances of side branch closure are significantly decreased so that's one but again that concept still has to be proven uh, by the randomized trial concept uh, that's the only issue remains on this uh, uh, aspect Samin, uh, going back uh, to the very relevant discussion we had with Dr. Fuster about uh, the Freedom Trial, uh, are you as convinced, he was very emphatic when he mentioned that, look, uh, none of the other uh, new generation DES would make a difference? Well, I would say that one uh, issue remains uh, that there are two things, that uh, a part of the event occurred because patient came back for revascularization and then developed myocardial infarction. Now, we know the difference in the stent thrombosis with the first and second generation stent is barely 1%. But more importantly, the revascularization. The many of the event leads to, uh, occurs after the revascularization, and we know revascularization becomes in half. So that the 12% becomes 6%, and your, uh, the MI rate, uh, which was the, decreased by another 2 or 3%. So that the difference will be there. Uh, whether it will be translate into a mortality, I'm not sure with the new generation stent. I definitely would say we'll have a lower uh, MI rate. Therefore, I don't think th that I personally, if you ask me, knowing with the science and so, that since we have lower stent thrombosis, we are lower TLR compared to the first generation by half, that it should translate into a uh, MI rate may be different, but the mortality may not be different between the cabbage uh, versus PCI. Do you think uh, the lower uh, duration of uh, dual antiplatelet therapy with some of these new stents may make any difference or really not? That probably not. Actually, uh, the whole issue is coming that maybe after a few years you start having some event in the cabbage group. Should they be getting the uh, plavix uh, even at a long uh, clopidogrel uh, for a longer period of time? That's a very important issue. Uh, that uh, That's even uh, further, which we need to be uh, discussed that maybe that uh, the patients with the cabbage, because they do have multiple events, uh, even after the index event, that uh, should the dual antiplatelet therapy will be beneficial in those cases. We know in a randomized trial uh, that it has not shown, uh, uh, a small randomized trial has not shown any difference, but uh, this issue still remains. That by giving a dual antiplatelet therapy of aspirin clopidogrel uh, for long time in the cabbage patients who are a frequent disease, uh, diffuse atherosclerosis might be beneficial. Anu, this is a, a, we went through very quickly here. Uh, once you're done with the polishing run, I have a few questions yeah. to ask you. Explain to us what exactly you did, because initially there was a lot of problem, even the rotablator exiting uh, into, out of the guide. Did yeah. you go on Dynaglide or what yeah. did you do? So to what I did was to get the vessel same. I think uh, the guide Sometimes uh, this is a long left vein. Usually right. in that situation, uh, we use uh, we like to use our Voda, Voda shape. And uh, since it was a long left main and uh, a bigger burr, the, the way the guide was facing, if it's not coaxial, the burr may not come out uh, easy. In that situation, instead of pushing, pulling, and uh, do uh, you know um, trying to uh, you know deliberately push the burr in the left main, what you do is uh, let bring the bar out of the guide with the um, dyna. Yeah, that's the key. So therefore, first thing first, 
you co align the alignment of the guy uh, not uh, so that it's not prolapsing so you are able to advance uh, alignment it still does not go don't hesitate in advancing the bar on the dinoglide dinoglide with the least trauma will go into the uh, vessel so that's basically we did in this uh, where is the issue about the guide support despite having a long sheath and uh, uh, this uh, complex anatomy uh, makes it harder uh, and so so now we had done a 1.5 rotor bar for the proximal LED going into the uh, mid LED and 1.75 into the proximal LED going into the diagonal and uh, now we are ready for our uh, uh, intervention. Question is do you want to quickly do a IVAS again? So you have abandoned the two burst strategy here? In this case no, we did a 1.5 in the VR yeah, but the means since the lesion is only in the proximal to the bifurcation so the what we did is we kind of since we are two bursts already we used I probably would then would have gone only 1.5 bar, but since we already have 1.75, we needed to rota into the diagonal side, so that that we did with a 1.75, okay. which we originally opened, and in the the first we started with a 1.5 into the main LED. Got it. So therefore, we did in a modified double bar. <laughs> no, no, which is yeah. uh, because uh, uh, for a moment I thought you had mentioned that was a 1.5, but 1.75. Yeah, one yeah. uh, first one we did 1.5, and then 1.75 in the diagonal direction. Right, exactly. This is the run through. Which wire is it? This is the run through. So, I mean, the huge uh, interventional landscape in uh, Europe and uh, Asia in the last uh, month or so has changed with the release of BVS. How do you think that is yeah. going to impact well, interventional We are ready cardiology? to start. Ready to start the trial. Hopefully by January here, right. um, uh, our BVS uh, three, um, by, uh, sorry, absorb, uh, uh, and uh, question will come. The which cases we're being done in the simple cases, uh, and I think that uh, the the it's a concept is very good, but the so issue will always uh, the why issue will always will remain that which cases you should be using it. That's basically the issue remain. Uh, if because there will be a price difference, if there's no price difference, then you're a little more liberal. But clearly the cases which are not uh, the, requ not a uh, require high pressure post dilatation, and so those cases. You are not going to use it, but simple, straightforward. I think it will be a reasonable uh, that uh, uh, that will be using uh, cases and probably more so patients who are going for surgery. Secondly, uh, also with a younger age. I mean, the some concept is there that maybe later on, if patient ever need, we have put a multi-layer stents in the LED, kind of uh, um, because of long lesions, uh, it's not suitable for uh, is the, the cabbage. Uh, you know, we are not doing sending cabbage. But you have put a multi multiple stents in the entire vessel, kind of full metal jacket, and if that get absorbed and ten year down the road, pay patient ever needs um, coronary artery bypass surgery, will be easier to uh, put a bypass because there will be no more stent left. So the some uh, issue, uh, the, the logistics remain. Uh, question to me is still I am not very clear in my mind. While it's a very uh, exciting opportunity, uh, that uh, we, where it will fit in the clinical practice. The reason is that as such the ever eluting stent and particularly of the Zion V, the data supports that so good uh, in terms of TLR, stent thrombosis and so whether anything can beat it uh, and in particularly simple lesions uh, and uh, you know the, that issue remains and so far we have no randomized trial data of the BVS against the DES right. and this is the, the absorb 3 will be the first randomized trial. Uh, in uh, for this purpose and therefore it's a tough uh, uh, time ahead because the at present Three our stents are so good yeah. to begin with. Anu, there must have been uh, some calcified uh, a little uh, plaque Flexible. there which kept directing your wire uh, all the time towards the uh, excellent technique in getting it into the LED. That, uh, that yes. was uh, tricky. Yeah, absolutely. Despite uh, performing the rotor, now we actually have put a fielder wire uh, into the LED and run through into the diagonal we have now 3 o um, 3 o 15 high quantum pressure. apex high pressure yeah okay. the high pressure uh, balloon so you are going to once again use there you go if it expands fully that means the ablation was uh, adequate good yeah now we need to pull back a little bit uh, the question is that do you need a uh, the I flex stone in the meantime, to our viewers, I hope you are uh, the ones in uh, the Chinese simulcast. Uh, uh, please uh, continue to benefit from our uh, uh, 
uh, simultaneous translation and uh, send us your questions at info at cccliveCases.org. Our uh, next uh, peripheral interventions uh, section with uh, Dr. Uh, Prakash Krishnan will be tomorrow. Please Good. join us for that. So the decision on Flexstone, are you going with that or you think uh, you'll be able to deploy the stent? Well, uh, no, let's see, had, now uh, we, let this see we are we done into the LED, now yeah. go to, into the diagonal. Into the diagonal. Let's see how we open it, looking good actually. And then we can take, uh, because approximately um, the, the 2.75 times 2.75. Yes, yeah, agree. 2.75, 15. 18, 18. 18, 18 15 and balloon. 15. 118 and 115. Samin, extending yeah. the both messages 18. of both the okay. freedom trial yes. as a take home message, uh, when you mentioned oh. uh, about its uh, implications with the heart team, is no, your heart both team both. already calibrating the results of the freedom trial in discussing with the patients? No, actually, I can tell you what is happening at Mount Sinai. Yes. We, are, we still have that same, our um, the syntax trial memo and the al working algorithms that any case with a 22 and above, if could have a potential, will could go for surgery, means they don't have COPD, they don't have a CVA, not MI situation, that those patients are coming out and having a hard team discussion. Now then question comes is, how do you incorporate uh, the freedom trial? To me, I think it will be reasonable at this time uh, to incorporate no, the, in all cases. 27518, two, or two, yeah. five to the diet. No, yeah. The in my opinion, the question remains is three vessel disease, irrespective of the syntax. If they are suitable, should go uh, for uh, uh, should be evaluated by heart team. The question comes in the two vessel, and of course, in all these three vessels, you have to have LED involvement because if the LED is not going to be bypassed, which made 95 six percent of the cases in the freedom trial, this the data will not apply. What is this now? It's a 2.75 uh, Everlumus. Everlumus uh, eluting stent, Zion's V. Uh, we are putting uh, both uh, one in the LED and one into the diagonal. Uh, both uh, knowing that it's a short lesion and it will be a good case uh, for uh, our famous technique of uh, uh, the simultaneous kissing stent. Uh, because the proximal vessel is quite big and uh, the short lesion, short uh, overall carina. Uh, and then, of course, we'll, uh, time will permit, uh, we'll be able to just show the IVAS also that how stent expands with the kissing balloon, uh, kissing stenting technique. Yeah, therefore, coming back to the right now, we are going to make a, a memo at present that three vessel, uh, irrespective of the syntax score, should be referred. Right now, only uh, three vessel with a high syntax score. But three vessel, irrespective of the syntax score, should be uh, referred uh, for a hard team discussion. For the diabetic population. For the diabetic patients now. So let's uh, extrapolate all this information going forward. Uh, how do you think it is going to impact on the guidelines uh, in, a, in a year or so? Well, I would say the, move, yeah. the guideline has to be, because unless the guidelines do, you know, just think about the carotid stenting and the tower procedures have not mushroomed in the United States. Why? Very regulated. You have to make by the guideline, and if you don't do by the guideline, then you will be uh, you uh, will not be reimbursed. So the penalty is there. So if go, that it has to be by the guidelines. Do it. Eh? Both yeah. Times. Then we are going both at ten atmosphere simultaneous. That it's is your step number one. Yeah. And step uh, number one. one. Both the proximal markers are exactly yeah. Yeah. Uh, identical, and it may look little crisscross. Right. But that's so okay. This is our first deploying the stand. So now one person will go. So now uh, I'm going to go now uh, into the LED. So 12. go to a four, uh, 12 to 14 atmosphere, not much. Uh, cannot go beyond uh, 14. We know the edge dissection. So that this case I have gone 14 and looks like nicely expanded. Then we deflate, uh, but leave the balloon there. Second step. Third step. My f uh, fellow uh, Rohit Buria is going to go up now. The another uh, 14 atmosphere. And uh, I still have my balloon into there, so it's a little crush, but that's not Good. negative. Because but the balloon is there, and now go to the fourth again at 10 atmosphere. Anu, I forgot to ask you. This was a seven French kite. Yes. Yes. Okay. We planned seven. Now this one expect better simultaneous inflation and simultaneous deflation. Now, if you still see the notch 
as indentation at the bifurcation, then you will bring a 308 times 2 balloon high pressure and will expand it. But if looks good and we'll just confirm by the IWAS and we'll leave it alone. Now the uh, challenging part is how you take this out. You can uh, do it uh, individually or otherwise hold both wires, get your guide out a little bit and bring both the balloons out same time. Actually you can leave the two balloons there and take a picture now. With a 7 French you can have that luxury. Yes, that is uh, exactly where Good. I remarked about the 7 French. Uh, uh, Good. What do you think? Let us do the Ivers. I will the Ivers. Post reality? Oh no. Yeah. Ivers. I think looks okay. Maybe one more uh, a slightly AP angulation to that. Uh, no, I, yeah, I will do, but I think the I was will from be my the point of view, it looks good uh, because this is part. Uh, now, any other view, it looks bad. Uh, if I, this is the only w where we actually had done multiple pictures originally, and uh, we did not see well anywhere else. Uh, this was the best view. How much would flush it? How much would be the duration of anti-platelet uh, and which which uh, agent would you Patient use? Patient is on aspirin and clopidogrel and uh, okay. will continue it for one year. Continue for one year. We are actually learning more and more even with the bifurcation cases uh, that one year is good enough. Uh, and of course, uh, we know many of the cases now going down to six months and that actually follows with the guidelines out of U.S. The U.S. guidelines so still not changed. this uh, very high risk case, uh, how do you ensure this is not a clopidogrel non-responder? Yeah, that's a very good point. Uh, the the what we learned basically is that by even if you find that they're non-responder, by changing the therapy does not make a difference. So that in some cases, uh, in this particular case, since we are putting a bifurcation stand, I would say will be reasonable that we uh, test this rare case because we don't do routinely now that this rare case uh, tested for uh, uh, the clopidogrel resistance by uh, using the verify assay. Uh, a verify now assay, uh, have we done today or no? No. Okay, we'll give the blood also. Um, Samin, another uh, follow up which I wanted to ask Dr. Fooster, 3000 patients in freedom, how many did uh, Mount Sinai enroll? Yeah, we enrolled 74 patients which is the lead uh, site in the United States. And uh, we were overall country-wise because there were two centers in Canada and two in uh, uh, South America. I think we were fourth or fifth in the all-time list, but United States, uh, the top enroller. And did each Good. site uh, do equal number of uh, cabbage and? Uh, yes, kind of. It just works roughly, out the same right. way by randomization. Okay, okay. start. Yeah. Okay. We are in uh, one hour, uh, the diagonal. The picture in picture, yeah. Okay, you start seeing the stent. Yes, we do. We will see the carina soon. So, even uh, despite the 175 burr, okay, you there see is the carina some, there yes. now. Yeah. It's a good uh, stent uh, expansion. I so think it looks very good. So, based, based on that, you would not go back to, yeah. to expand that. Yeah. To okay. me, uh, angiographically, also it looked quite well. Uh, just to, we will take some more pictures, but I am just saying from my uh, angiography point of view um, that uh, stent uh, having done a uh, large number of these uh, kissing stents that uh, it looked quite uh, acceptable because that is how it looks a uh, little bit overlap uh, uh, but um, you, you do not have indentation at the level of the bifurcation which means uh, that is completely okay that you are done with it. Now should you post dilate I mean I think we can go if you want to just at the level of the carina need to post dilate. Well, let us, let us, are you going to IVUS in the direction of the LED? Well, I think we saw it, uh, it looked so good okay. uh, in both of them and uh, knowing that we started few minutes uh, later and uh, have done. Look, uh, this is an exceptional case, uh, a, a superb review also with Dr. Fooster for the Freedom Trial uh, to have performed uh, Dextrocardia complex uh, left main bifurcation with rotablator uh, uh, speaks volumes of your skills. You want to do? Uh, looks looks further? very good there. Yeah, yeah, that's as I said. That personally, I will leave it. That's how. Uh, Samin, what about in the mid portion uh, of the after there is a small? Yeah, that was there always a 50 percent, 30 okay. to 50 percent mid LED lesion. You're going Our to leave plan it alone. Was always to leave it, and uh, we are going to do a verify assay now. Uh, and uh, to take the wire out and take the last picture in your first view. No, no, and this mean, view. Uh, in this view, this actually is the better view. Mm. 
uh, and low mag with the nitro. Uh, and uh, let's go back to while uh, taking the last picture. We'll show you. Uh, take our questions and uh, take a message. Take it out. Uh, the, uh, that uh, okay. Let's see the picture first. I think uh, now we have to go to the view now. So, I mean, uh, one of the uh, points which uh, uh, it's an observation I can make. Uh, sometimes uh, I go back and review our cases from three and four years ago. These cases we routinely used to use the intraaortic balloon pump, and if the LV function was impaired, an impella. Yeah. So, what do you think has happened? Uh, I think uh, the we patient got remains the same. same. Uh, so, why are uh, we able to get away without uh, using any of the support devices? I would say the better understanding, better uh, uh, performance of the procedure leading to uh, these kind of uh, excellent uh, less means the uh, we used to be more invasive, more aggressive, more and more we learn less trauma you do to the patient, to the vessel, better it is on the long term. That is the key. Now, let us come back to our take home message. One is the how do we incorporate the premium trial as we have discussed quite well in the side branch. The long term data of the coronary revascularization for complex multi vessel CAD clearly favors cabbage over first generation DES. The point which we understood first generation DES should become the default therapy by guidelines uh, as we learned from uh, freedom. Second, the data are emerging that side branch lesions unless has less than TIMI 3 flow can be left alone without any increase in cardiac events at follow up the concept of keep it open KIO concept and that is a very very important that leads to our three questions to get a CME credit because as of January our this monthly webcast become the CME webcast. So, the clearly that those who attend it answer those three questions will get a one or two hours something like that. Uh, they will tell us a little more. And exactly. that is that is for that you do not have to watch live you could do on the archive session and, too. And you can do it archive session also. So, I have have a three <coughs> questions and they are the answers will be posted uh, later on that the following are the trials which included all patients with diabetes mellitus except Barry, Barry 2 D, Freedom, Cardia and Syntax. The second question in the Freedom trial following endpoints were lower in the cabbage arm versus PCI arm except all cause mortality, TVR, TLR, stroke, MI or death. And the lastly third question in the triter stent trial uh, include which combination for bifurcation lesion and stenting, DS in main vessel, DS in side branch, BMS in main vessel and DS in the side branch or DS in main vessel and BMS in side branch or BMS in main vessel and BMS in side branch. And I am sure those who have attended our lectures and the discussion should be able to answer these three simple questions. Uh, with that note, we conclude I think our. They may be able to answer, but I would not go as far as calling them simple questions. <laughs> the last one was pretty tricky. Uh, anu, great job. Uh, uh, any final words from you? Um, no, I think um, so, uh, the question was the same. Dr. Sharma mentioned about uh, the dextrocardia not coming. I mean, they come once in uh, two years. So I had uh, three dextrocardia in one week when this patient uh, presented. And before that was three years ago was another acute MI case. Well, uh, call it yes. your dextrocardia week then. Uh, yeah, and actually uh, we had a f same fellow did all three cases, so we call him the dextrocardia fellow also. <laughs> Fantastic, Anu, <laughs> great, uh, great case. Uh, this being the last uh, case of the year, uh, we'd like to wish you all happy holidays. Uh, we'll see you in the new year on January the 15th. Uh, till that time, if you missed this session or any before, go back to the archive session. We will see you next time.